is that life is not linear. And I, you know, I, my podcasts aren't linear, life isn't linear, but we often think, you know, I know I definitely did at 18, 19, I felt like it was a very stepwise path. If I do X, I will get Y and it's step by step by step. And, um, you know, I came from um, a very modest um, background um, to two working parents um, working in retail and you know, they were like, go to university. That is, that is the path. And so I went and I was about to graduate and I was like, what, what's the next step? Like, this is what you do. What, what's next? And so, you know, I had to, and they were there along the way to bounce ideas off of, but figure out what is the next step. So in both of your stories, I you know, really want to highlight that it doesn't sound like there's a quote next step. And that sometimes it can be, you know, the steps are all over the place. And sometimes they, the steps look like the last step and then the next step and the back step. So, you know, Jan, I believe that we capture that with you. Uh, Marvin, I just want to turn it over to you and just ask you, you know, how can we integrate your experience with both? How did you kind of quote, get those opportunities, I would use the word, earn those opportunities or make those opportunities. And how does that kind of relate to the various management skills that management learners might be able to connect with? Definitely. And um, I'm, I'm glad to hear you use the word failure and so, you know, a few times because I really resonate with that word in a positive way because in a lot of times it's seen as a negative, um, but I haven't been afraid to fail. Um, so like one of my mentors, um, Paul Byrne, who's the, who was the first EPL president who I've been lucky enough to have a mentorship relationship with him um, and it was lucky to have a podcast with him. And he had over 48 jobs um, before he eventually um, was able to be on the team that launched MLSE, Maple Leaf Sports Entertainment, which was the Raptors, um, uh, Toronto FC and everything. And I've, I'm similar. I've been able to have jobs, um, leave jobs. I, I, was, I was fired from one job because I was watching soccer on the job. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> was it a soccer job or were you watching like another team? <laughs> I was watching a game. I was working actually at, at Oh My Soul um, on Young Street. And um, there was honestly, there's nothing to do. So I, I streamed I one of the games. And Good. <laughs> Sorry, I'll, um, I'll stop interrupting. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. And um, so I, I've been willing to, you know, put my best foot forward. And that moment is obviously a little distracted with watching footy, but that's that's a passion of mine, like, like Jan said in his intro. And that's, you know, kind of led to me now working for a professional soccer team. But in relation to the management students, you know, you have to be willing to try. Um, and trying sometimes means you fail. Some, trying sometimes means you succeed. Trying sometimes means you hover somewhere in between those two. And I've definitely learned that over the years and I'm continuing to try different things. Um, so I really resonate with the challenges that come with, um, you know, being a management student specifically, you know, you have to be um, multi willing to multitask and you have to have multiple skills. Um, and the big thing is just being open to learn, take a learn from everything that you do in the community and your family and school and in in every environment you're put in. So yeah. I guess I'll I mean there's a part of me that wants to ask Marvin, you know, which game got you fired? Um, <laughs> it was an Arsenal game. I'm an Arsenal fan. <laughs> wow. Again, yeah, well, like, sometimes if you're an Arsenal fan like me, there's games you should turn off and not watch. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll have we'll have lots to talk about it at future time, kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, and I have a question for you in the coaching and the transition and the retiring. So when you came to Halifax, because obviously there's a, you know a shelf life for playing professional, and that did you come with the idea that you thought you would transition into coaching? Um, it, did it open up? Was there an intention and a conversation about how that might work? Because I think one of the fascinating things about sports is that transition from being an athlete to fulfilling different roles and where that might lead because so many players' careers end young in that sense. Um, I've had the opportunity to to be coached by some of the best coaches that have ever coached the game. Um, Stephen Hart being one of them. Um, I've had the likes of Francisco Maturana from Colombia. Uh, uh, so many coaches. Leo, Leo Benhaka, who actually took us to the World Cup. Um, the Dutchman. 
um, so many names, but all of them seem to always urge me to take up coaching after I retired. Um, I, I guess they saw something that I didn't, but every coach I've had, every single one, Rene Simo is from Brazil. Um, they always kind of pushed me in that direction. And um, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was lucky enough to, to be somebody who had parents who actually taught me that I should, you know, I should listen to people <laughs> that are older than me and smarter than me and wiser than me. So it was really, I, I was one that always used to take advice. It was easy to give me advice and, and, and I was always one to be open to taking positive advice. And um, while playing the game, I actually did a number of coaching courses. Um, in saying that, I just graduated uh, doing my Canadian B license uh, in February. I just completed it uh, last month. But when I came to Halifax, I had no intention of retiring. Um, in, in my personal opinion, I think uh, I didn't have the season that would have led me to being nominated for CONCACAF goalkeeper of the year on two separate occasions. And I was kind of disappointed. But as I said, I fell in love with the city. I fell in love with the team. I fell in love with the organization. And I really felt like I wanted to contribute. Um, when Stephen came to me after the season, and we spoke about the season that I had and about um, my thoughts, I actually had offers on the table. Um, I had a, a big contract on the table to go to Saudi Arabia. And as I said, for me at that point, it, it wasn't really about money. It wasn't about anything else, but love. I really love the city. I really love the team. And um, the transition was, 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 for me, it was effortless because I was always that type of player. I was always that type of person who would help and who would try to, 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 to pass positive information and good coaching tips and ideas onto the younger ones. Um, so much so it kind of led Christian to, Christian Oxner, that is to be in in my opinion, one of the best goalkeepers in the country. Um, so yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't much of a conversation that was had. I didn't have thoughts of retiring. But as I said, after the season that I had the first year, I really wanted to give back. And after the season, I start with uh, Stephen Hart. We had a discussion and, and it, it was, as they say, the rest was history after that. Yeah, cool. And I mean, and just, I could see the relation, I mean, just in terms of because you were such a senior player and Christian was obviously very young when they started that you yeah. would have had to have that mentoring uh, capacity given the nature of the league. So it looks, you know, that I'm, that I'm happy that the conversation was positive and it's worked out really well. Great. Yeah, thanks. Um, um, funny story about Christian, I remember. <laughs> he was mentioning this to me the other day. Um, he said it was the first time he had trained with, somebody that level of, that that high level of professional which was myself and I have a bad habit that I don't really drink water throughout the entire training session so it could be hour and a half two hours I never take a sip of water and and then just the other day we were having a conversation and he was like bro I remember the first year you came in and I was just looking at you like is this guy crazy is this how professionals are this guy is not even drinking water and I'm like, yo, professionalism is about you doing the things that work for you. It's not about doing the things that work for somebody else. I say, so if you sit, if you sat there for the entire 2019 and tried not to drink water, dehydrated yourself, that was on you. That wasn't on anybody else. Just, just a funny story. But yeah, um, it was, it was, it was, it was good work. Well, it is good working with the team, with the organization. And, and, and for me, as I said, it was. It was it was effortless. It was seamless the transition because I I was always told from from John that I was that type of person, that type of individual that would always pass good information on, and I was always a student of the game. So I guess coaching was always in the books for me. Thank you. Hey, it's um.